Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over drill tables and fab assembly notes. And this comes from me having to do another fab drawing for a PCB I was working on. And I was looking through and I realized that past the fa past fab drawings I had shown on my YouTube channel here and other stuff I had done, I had not actually put a drill table in there. And some of the examples I'd seen online actually had that. So I started looking around and finding this stuff. And what I found was, well, yeah, of course, there's a thread on the forum about this. And uh, yeah, so someone was asking, how do you do this? And I was really interested, so I thought I'd just show it here, how we actually do it. So, uh, and you know, it's like one of those things where I've been looking at these various options for years, and <laughs> I didn't, you know, I see a button, and I don't know what it actually is for, and I never really clicked it, and now I know what it's for. So let's go and see how to do this. So um, if we look at this, the first thing we need to do is actually export the drills again. And so we all, we have this dialogue. If you've done exports before, right? So this is how you do the Gerbers, but then there's also this generate drill file. This is a whole other generate drill menu here. And so usually, you know, you go through, this is my normal settings here, millimeters, postscript, you know, all these other things I usually combine, PTH and NPTH, because I like to have a single .DRL, and then you generate a drill file, that's fine, whatever. But this has always been here, and I never knew what it was, and it turns out, yeah, this is actually exactly what I want. Oh, actually, this is not what I want. I want a, uh, I want a DXF. So uh, in the map file format, I want DXF here, and we'll generate that, and this is in our, this is just in the, the general, uh, uh, the general directory there. So we'll go to that directory here, and then we'll look for that DXF just to make sure it's there. Uh, we can just date, date modified. Um, is that the right thing? It might be, oh, output, oh, it's in my Gerber's file. Okay, that's okay. Output Gerber's rev A. There it is, the postscript and then the DXF. Uh, that's the DRL, am I missing this? DRL map. DXF, right above it, duh. Okay, great. So we've generated that. Uh, now let's uh, let's copy this directory structure here. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna close this. And now what I'm gonna do is actually just go and re-import it. So import graphics is basically how you can, this is how normally I pull in a um, uh, outline file for if I'm working with a mechanical engineer and they've given me a shape that I can pull in, then I can start with that and start with the DXF file. Uh, so let's browse from here. Let's hopefully it's no. Nope. We'll go here. There we go. And there's the DXF. Okay, great. Now I'm just going to make sure it's on the drawings layer. Hit OK. And look at that. So now this is an entire thing that just shows up on the on the fab assembly drawing. So remember, this is on the drawings user layer. So I can turn that on or off. Uh, and now what this shows is basically there's a, a wide variety of different markings to indicate different hole sizes. And this is used because a manufacturer probably wants to know how, you know, they want to take a look at this fab drawing and do a quote based on it. And possibly they want to make sure that there's nothing weird in here. You know, you don't have a drill that's 55 millimeters or something that got really outsized and maybe didn't show up as an error. So they can also view it here. And so this shows every single drill that's happened, how many there are. What's very obvious here is the 479. This is this is the via drill, right? So this is I have a lot of I have 479 vias, uh, but each one of these, you know, they can start to multiply that based on their average amount of time to do a via drill, and then they could say, oh, this board's going to take, you know, 55 minutes to drill or something like that. And if there's a stack of them, we can also if we zoom in because it is a vector-based file here. It actually, you know, the detail is actually shows up even when you zoom all the way in, which is really nice. So uh, we've got that here. So I'm going to actually just go and label this uh, as the ABC, ABC drill map. I'll put this on the drawings layer as well. And then I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to label this as dimensions just so that it's clear that there's dimensions, uh, that there's two different views, and that is not showing that there's two boards, obviously. Uh, it should be clear, but just, just so it's, just so I'm extra explicit there. This is the drill table. This is what we've done a video about in the past. So having a, the stack up, and remember this is a specific stack up based on uh, wanting 50 ohms and the size of the traces for the antennas that are on board here. 
And then uh, a friend pointed me at this blog post the other day, uh, 15, 14 things your fab house needs to know. One thing that I'd search for, there's not really a ton of just like example fab drawings online. And I might try and post this one as an example fab drawing. Uh, but this is great because you can just literally go and copy this. And we'll take a look at it once we actually get in there just to see what it says. But previously I had the fab notes actually in, this is this is as a footprint and you can go and get the footprint from the, the repository we have for different templates here, right? So this is just a four layer two, Two dash twenty three thirteen uh, pre preg uh, board from JLC, and I had some notes up here that were in integrated with the with the table, but now I've actually split that out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop this in on the drawings layer, and it's a little bit easier to see. It's not going to be great. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I know. Sorry, my text is small. I feel like I have to just to fit everything on the screen here. And so what I do then is I just basically add four. Uh, four spaces here to make this a little bit easier to read. Oops. And I did that wrong. One, two, three, four. There we go. And I'll just move you magic here. Okay, so I went and just, I just was copy pasting those spaces in there just to make it a little easier to read. And so let's put this on here. We're gonna make this a little bit smaller actually. So we'll also make this uh, 0.15 just to try and squeeze it all in here. Oh, and we're gonna do left justification as well. All right, that's yeah, still not quite going to be fitting there. But the other thing is that this is kind of a template. So I guess we can also move this guy down. So let's do that. Uh, let's move this down. And now we have now we have room for this. Now I, I actually went and I tried to actually modify the table to fit all this stuff in here as like a template. Unfortunately, on the table you have to have it's impossible to add like a single large text box like this. I think that's just part of how the, the footprints work. And so I thought it was just as easy just to go and copy paste this in here. Now, if we go and look at what this is, um, this is a lot of this. I had mentioned this briefly in that last video, which I've linked down below. But I said you might want to put something in there like conforms, conforms to IPC something, something, something. And this basically listed out here, this IPC 6012 class two. And this class one, two, three, basically class one is, the easy way to think about that is class one is kind of like uh, consumer goods, doesn't really care about it. Class two is like, yeah, you know, industrial, you want to have uh, more, this is very <laughs> generic, of course. And class three is like, no, 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 this is very like high rigorous standards you really need to, uh, there's very rigorous standards need to apply to the board itself. And so that's usually like medical devices, aerospace, things like that. So, you know, you may or may not want to put that in there. I would say the blog post that I'll link in is well, where we got this from, um, also describes a little bit better. And so let's just take a little bit more look here though. Uh, other things that, you know, talk about do not scale drawing. This is the material. And what we're really doing here is we're trying to replace this process here, right? So if you go to a board house these days, you can go and select all the things you have on here. Oh, okay, I want, I want, uh, you know, Enig, Electrolyst Nickel, Immersion Gold, I want to have, you know, the board thickness is 0.8, you know, they might give you the stack up. So when you do, uh, where's, uh, bah, 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 bah. I should know this by now, but um, there is usually a thing for impedance. I thought that's on here, I guess. Maybe that's moved or changed, but um, usually there's a thing for controlled impedance, and then that will be a defined stack up that they basically hand to you. Uh, in this case, now we're gonna well, we we define that in our table here, right? So, in this case, we'd want to also mention if it's controlled impedance, that kind of thing. Flatness, you know, that's kind of just you get what you get with the, the online with these online things these days. You don't really get to describe this. Etched geometry, surface finish, all these things. So you can basically go through and you can put in whatever you want here. Now, the tough thing about this is if you put in whatever you want, you might unknowingly put in a specification that's super hard to achieve, right? If you're like, I want 0 0.001 millimeter tolerance. And so everything has to be within a super, super tight tolerance. Well, Boardhouse probably won't tell you no, they'll just quote your price and that's okay. But you're going to be surprised when your board, your board that costs $5 on an online service comes back as costing $5,000. Uh, and so and usually this, you know, the reason you're doing this fab drawing in the first place is because you're moving from one of the online services to a more traditional board house, maybe a domestic board house if you're in the US, uh, that sort of thing. And they don't have this online processing, but they might have more advanced capabilities. And they can do whatever you want, 
but they're gonna charge you for it. And so that's what we're really coming down to here. And so, like I said, you can really specify a wide range of things in here. That's why I liked having that starting point here. The main things you need to know though are similar to what you have here, right? What color is it? What is the surface finish? What should the silk screen look like? You know, is it gonna be broken out? Are you accepting X outs if you're doing panelization? That sort of thing. And so this is really just a starting point here. You don't have to, you don't have to follow this. You can go and find other examples, but I, I was, I had a tough time finding example text to start from because I think a lot of times this is internal within companies. Usually the people that are using this are larger traditional companies and they have stuff internally and they have their own specific specifications they've been building over time. And so let's take a look at what this looks like now when I print out. So I'm gonna go and print this actual entire drawing here. And this is what I would post if I ended up posting this. So we're gonna make sure all the layers on a single page. We, are, we do wanna point the, uh, uh, border and title mark, drill marks. We're gonna say, uh, I don't actually know here. I think we wanna do, yeah, I think we'll, we'll leave real drill for now. Let's take a look at the print preview. Okay, this is the wrong size sheet because it's trying to print it to my actual printer. Let's uh, close out of this. I think we need to, yeah. So this is choosing my actual printer. Let's go into print. I'm gonna choose my, I'm gonna print to PDF and then we'll go here and then we'll cancel. Okay, that's fine. And then we'll start again because what all I wanted to do is select the right printer in order to see the uh, preview. I should be able to see it. Nope, still not a preview. Okay, well, we'll just print it to the PDF and see what that looks like. Okay, so we got the edge cuts and the drawing layer. That's really all we need here. Uh, toward, uh, border, single page. We're gonna go print, print to PDF. We're going to say today's date. So I guess this is the last time I did this. Uh, this is 2021, And we'll leave, we'll pretend it's 849 in the morning. Okay. And then we're gonna have to go and find this. I'll go back up to my output file. So this is how I like to start. I've started doing this where I have standard output uh, files here as well. And let's go to production files. No, that's the assembly. Uh, where did it print to? Print, print. Output, oh, it's in the Gerber's file, okay. Usually I've been making fab, fab directories for this sort of thing, but that's fine. We'll leave it in Gerber's for now. And here we go. All right, and so here is our drawing. So you see down in the, uh, the lower right here, this has the logo that I added, uh, the title of the board, all of the drill maps. We have dimensions. We have the specifications in the upper right. So these are all the notes that we added here. And then this is the drill table like we had used before. And so this is looking like a pretty legit uh, drawing now. I mean, there's a couple of things you could put in here, other tolerances and, and things like that. But really having the drill map in there is a, a, nice, a nice addition. And I think that that really pushes it more towards a traditional, what a board house is expecting. And that's, that's, uh, that's great. So this is a fab drawing uh, with the drill table now with the notes. Um, I actually didn't need this initially, right? I was using a one of the online services that I mentioned, actually the one I showed, and it worked out fine. It depends on how you're going to be, you know, using uh, your your designs in the future, and you know where you're sourcing your boards from, and really what your requirements are. I think a fab drawing is great because you can really clarify what you do or don't want. I think having that in your design documentation, it even if you're sending it off to a place that has an online interface like that, you can go and really specify the things that you want. And that should be a kind of a backstop for if they're doing anything that, that you don't expect there, you can always use that as reference document and ask them to check into that to make sure that they're doing everything that you asked for in that documentation. They should call out if they can't hit a spec or not. If you have any other thoughts about this, you can always let us know down in the YouTube comments down below. There's also a blog post that's associated with this. We've been doing that with more things here. We'll have all the links over in that blog post. Please, please, please check that out. 
And uh, there's also a forum associated with this as well. This is a board that we've been working on in Contextual Electronics, the course. And so you can go and follow along as we built this entire thing over the past year or so. We're in the firmware stages now, and so we've been programming the firmware and working on that. We're actually probably moving into a Rev B version soon. And so we'll have more details about that and more documentation around that. If you have any thoughts, you can always let us know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.